Now, let me show you what you're eventually going to be seeing. Let's copy this demo into feedback and into songs and paste it. Now we go back into feedback into the application. We have the same screen again. Let's resize it as well. And now press ESC. And now you have something that shows you the offset time step beats per minute start a time signature beats per minute again uh, the untitled song untitled artist and you have expert guitar let me show you a little something press ESC once more you get a menu that says new chart load chart save chart chart settings program settings show help and quit what you should do if you want to see what I'm doing what I have done um, in preparation go to load chart and you see that this isn't a song, it's actually a folder. So go into Demo. And by the way, whenever you say Parent, it means that that's the folder above it. Myself. And now if you would, go to something that says Sweet Child Guitar dot Chart. And by the way, each of your folders are labeled in blue. All right, let's see what we've got here. And that's as far as I hooked up for the demo. By the way, if you were wondering, that is exactly as it looks like um, when you're playing Guitar Hero 2. Um, but that's because I copied off um, from them and I looked at it and I placed it as precise as I could and this is how it looks like. Now you're probably wondering, hey, this looks a little bit like Guitar Hero. Well, guess what it is. That's the purpose of it, so that you can see exactly what it'll look like for the most part, of course. You'll be able to see the notes. You could even play along with it, air guitar if you feel like it, whatever. But the editing, I warn you, is pretty time consuming. So if you do not want to, you know, spend hours at a time doing this, then close out right now. But if you're in it, by all means, stick with it. All right, now let's do what you will be doing exactly. Close this out right now. And now go into Songs and into Demo and delete that. Now, go back all the way up to the top and say, look into this Sweet Child folder and copy the guitar, the rhythm, and the song. Go into Feedback and go into Songs and if you haven't realized this is where you're going to be putting all of the songs that from now on you are will be editing so press V okay and now we have them inside of feedback now look closely alright this will be a little bit confusing if you didn't have me right next to you talking to you about it go into feedback and then once again click ESC to get out of that now as you see right here nothing is actually loaded there are no songs nothing nothing whatsoever so go into ESC and say new chart but wait a minute none of these charts none of these things actually say sweet child of mine you wanna know why because these are three completely separate um, song files OGG files now make sure that when you're doing this that you can convert to OGG because otherwise um, it's not going to recognize it, but the songless editor thankfully can. Now go back into feedback. Naturally, you're probably going to want to do the guitar part first. And since the song part is only um, the vocals and the drums, there's, there's really nothing to do with it. So we can eliminate this one right here. Now go into guitar and press enter. Immediately go to something that says chart settings. What you notice is that it says song name, artist name, character name, and blah 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 blah. 
If you would go into the song name and instead of saying guitar, say sweet child o mine. And it's best to look as professional as possible. That's just a pet peeve of mine. And then go into artists and say guns and roses. Now skip all the way down here to where it says audio. Notice it says guitar.ogg. That's because it assigned it specifically to look at that specific um, sound file for its music. Now you can go into the main menu and just for uh, saving sake let's go ahead and save chart. That, that sound was just the saving thing, it's not anything related to your music. Okay, now let's go into the shortcuts. Look at your keyboard. If you're having a QWERTY keyboard, QWERTY being that right next to the tab button, there's a Q, W, E, R, T, and Y. Go to the space bar and hover over it. This is your play and pause. Watch closely. It's kind of like having a media player. You have your pause button and you have your play button. Space bar does that. Now if you press shift and spacebar, it automatically brings you to the beginning and then it plays it. Now if you do it quickly, you can go to the start and just uh, stay at the start like this. Simple enough, right? Now you're probably thinking, wait, I want to get to the notes. Well, please bear with me because it's very important that I go through this as thoroughly as possible with you. What you have in front of you is you have also your numbers on top of the QWERTY. You have one, two, three, four, and five. Coincidentally, there are five frets. Green, red, yellow, blue, and orange. This is how you input it. Let's say you want to put in a green note. Press one. Let's say you want to put in a red note. Press two. Let's say you want to put in a yellow note. Press three. Let's say you want to put in a blue note. Press four. And naturally, if you want orange, press five. Okay, you got something that started here. Big whoop. When you play it, all you still get is just empty space, and then finally Slash comes in way at the end. Obviously, this is getting us nowhere. What you want to do is you want to... By the way, when you press the same button twice, it gets rid of that note. So if there's a note, um, like an orange note, uh, somewhere further up ahead, and you want to delete it, just press it. If you want to delete the blue note, press that. Orange note, press it again. Red note, green note. You get used to it pretty quickly. Now, here's where we have to do a little bit of guess and check. Let's figure out exactly where Slash starts playing. Emphasis on where it starts. Press the space bar to play. Aha! If you look over right on top of the title, right to the left, it should say time, and it says something like 3.5. So that's where he starts. Okay, go back to the beginning. Here's a technique that I was taught by at the, st at the guys at Score Hero. Very, very useful if you want to go to that. It'll also explain it very nicely over there. Plant one note down first. Let's say you want to just put in, it doesn't really matter, press the green note, okay? Now, if you look over right next to your P on your keyboard, there should be the two brackets. The one all the way to your right is to increase the so-called offset, which means that that is when you will start playing. The one on the left will decrease it. So let's press it. As you can see, it goes over by one second. Press it again, it goes two seconds, press it again, and it's three. Now let's say you want to go to 3.5, and you press it again, but there's four. Hold your horses. If you press shift and then either of those buttons, it'll make you go one tenth. So let's go to 3.5. And also, if you want to get really, 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 really honky precise, go ahead and press control shift and that'll shift you only one. As you can see, you can get really, really, really detailed with this, but right now we're not even going to need that.